Christmas Day is almost here. And if you haven't finished your holiday shopping just yet, I have a great idea for you that you can add to your list. It's a gift that will make anybody smile, plus it will help out a four-legged friend. Right now, I have five animals. Um, that's a lot for me usually because they usually move pretty quick. This is a bad time of year for us because the rescues get real uh, full. Uh, weather gets bad across the country. It's hard to get transports. So between about October 31st, Halloween, and the end of February, it's hard to move animals out of here to rescues. When you move them out of here, I mean, is it mostly to local people or do you do sometimes like online stuff, th things like that? Most of my dogs go to rescues that are outside the area. We have a couple of people that are local that help us find rescues that will take dogs. They end up going north to the Michigan area. They go west to California. They go to Florida. Very few of our animals are adopted by local people. Is that discouraging at all? It is because I see people going to pet stores and buying dogs and cats, and I hear about it every week. I'm going to go buy my kid a puppy for Christmas. Well, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of puppies, but think about other animal shelters in the local area, Allen County, Kentucky, Gallatin, Nashville. I'd a lot rather see someone go to a, a, a pound and a shelter and adopt one than go and buy another one put another one on the street. Talk about too, what you try to do here as far as when you get the animals. What's the process like? process here is we pick the animal up. We have to hold it three days to allow an, a potential owner to claim the animal. After three days, by law, they become our property. Now, very often I keep animals much longer than three days because in three days I can't find a placement place for them. So uh, I'll put them on Facebook. That becomes my biggest, most powerful tool because of people network and put it out there. If the timing's right, I can get it in the newspaper. If the timing's right, and I can get it on the radio, but that's because of the di dynamics and logistics. It rarely happens to make that effective. So I do the Facebook thing and hope that somebody calls and or sees it. Do you ever have to euthanize the animals? We do occasionally. About uh, 98 to 99 percent of mine do go to rescue, and that number is pretty close to the county pound as well. But uh, even with that, I process over 200 animals a year through here, just from the seven square miles of the city of Lafette. And I end up having to euthanize uh, sometimes because there's no other option. If there's no rescues that'll take them, and a dog's been here two or three weeks, it needs to go and this is not the ideal environment for one, so we do euthanize. I'm sure that's heartbreaking for you too because I'm sure you love animals being in this job. I love animals. Uh, I'm not overly emotional about them, but it is heartbreaking because most of the ones I euthanize are potentially good pets. They have good dispositions. They're not a great, now the ones we have to euthanize because of aggression or because of injury or extreme old age, that's just, it's just part of doing business. But the ones like I've got right now, I've got three or four dogs that would make excellent pets. And unfortunately, I've had them almost two weeks now. They're probably going to be going to euthanasia within a week here because we're coming up on Christmas. And uh, cold weather, icy weather just makes it more difficult to care for the animals here. How big of a Christmas present would this be to some child probably, would you say, when, if, the, if the parent would just be willing to come here and, and look at the animals? Potentially, it could be a huge present. Uh, the Jack Russell Terrier I've got is, is a fantastic, small, probably an indoor dog. Now, the uh, older Husky I've got might not be such a good pet for a child, I'll be honest. Uh, he's uh, probably eight, nine years old. And uh, the other three are rowdy. They've got very energetic dispositions, and they may be a handful for someone. But that's just because that's the mix I've got today. Now, you, you know, next week it may be a different mix. I do everything in my power to keep from having to euthanize, but sometimes, the legit, like if I got if I had to pick up five dogs today, I'd have nowhere to put them. What's the maximum number that you can put here in the, in the Lafette Pound? Facility-wise, I've got ten kennels. Okay. Now, because of the logistics here, uh, we don't have a large place, as you can see. Uh, I try to never have more than five. Now, I can right now I can take, and I've got two of these, three that I've got. Uh, kennel together because they're all from the same litter but uh, technically I can hold 10 we're not supposed to double them up unless they're known family members and they're not male and female and those kinds of things so uh, but uh, realistically seven to eight is all I want to put in here because if I have to move stuff around I've got to move them from one full one to an empty one to do cleaning and things of that nature. 
What is the process like for someone, let's just say if, if, if they want to, they see the story, they want to come and adopt one of these animals, what do they have to do? What's the way to contact you and then what's the process like? We've got a very simple process here for both the city and the county. Uh, the county officer works much the same way I do. You have to call the Lafette Police Department to contact me. Uh, they contact me by dispatch and by radio. Some of you out there have my phone number, and if you've got it, you're free. Welcome to call me. But uh, if you want to come look at an animal, uh, you can either come out here to the pound. If I'm here, the gate will be open. That's rare. I'm usually out on patrol. Call the police department. Tell me you'd like to look at animals or uh, call me on my phone. If you find one you like, the, there's a, a form we fill out that lets me do a little background on you, not a background check, but you know who you are, where you live, and, and, and how many people in your family, things of that nature. The adopter must get the animal spayed or neutered and vaccinated before we can release them from the pound. That's state law. Now, we do have an assistance program here in the county, uh, the Macon Spay-Neuter Assistance Ladies. They're getting grants, and they've offered to spay and neuter and or vaccinate any of our animals that someone chooses to adopt. So theoretically, it won't cost you a penny other than a little of your time to come out and look and then drop the dog off with the Macon Spay and Neuter Assistance Ladies who will assist us as long as their grant money holds out with doing spays and neuters on the animals that we get here. They work primarily cats, but they will help us with dogs to try and move them to keep them from being euthanized. And then once the spay and neuter is done and the vaccination is done, you take the animal home. How hopeful are you that the local community will see this story and, and start being more interested in maybe coming here and adopting pets? I would love to see that. Uh, I, like I said, I know there's a lot of people that end up going and purchasing animals. There's enough animals in the world. There's no need to purchase anymore. You might have to be a little patient and wait and uh, contact us more regularly and watch my Facebook page and watch the county's uh, Facebook page and think about adopting. And if not from us, there's, there's a number of shelters outside our county that would love to adopt their animals out. Uh, go to do a little more legwork before you go spend 50 or $100 on a dog from a pet store and then let three or four get euthanized in the process. It'd just be the right thing to do. As Tom Dallas mentioned, if you're interested in adopting a pet, please call the Lafayette Police Department at 615-666-4725 for more information. Reporting in Lafayette, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.